Welcome to another edition of Tiffin Box TV, where you are inspired and motivated to create a thriving photography business. I'm your host, Seishu. Thanks for coming and joining me again for another edition. Today, I'm speaking with Rachel Rogers, who is an attorney who has also founded Small Business Body Card, a, a website that provides a framework and perhaps a legal stepping stone for small business owners just like you and me. Rachel, uh, is launching a new product for photographers called Legal Nunchucks. I mean, the name itself is just like, what? <laughs> so I had to ask her on the show. <laughs> and I said, uh, Rachel, let's let's talk a little bit about uh, Legal Nunchucks and Small Business Body Card. And she was like, yeah, let's do it. So, Rachel, thanks for joining me again. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to talk to you. Uh, you know, it's 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 an interesting world we live in these days. Um, we are creative people as photographers but we are uh, as a business as a as a as business people we are somewhat somewhat uh you know uh isolated you know yes we, we don't we don't tend to think of all the other things that we need to think of and one of the things in addition to accounting which you know most photographers probably will tell you they hate yes it's it's the legal stuff totally right the legal yeah. stuff always is uh in the back burner it's mm -hmm. always something it's like oh we'll talk about it we'll talk about it we'll deal with it later right yes and that's dangerous definitely right so let's talk a little bit about uh you know small business bodyguard what what exactly is small business bodyguard why did you start it and how did how is it helping small business owners like me like the, the audience that i'm that we're going to be talking to yeah um, well, I started uh, first my practice, uh, Rachel Rogers Law Office, um, and in my practice, I worked with lots of creative entrepreneurs, um, and so some of them would come to me, and we'd talk about their legal needs, and they clearly had a need for me to do some, some work for them, whether it's drafting contracts, forming, forming a business entity, protecting their intellectual property. Um, but they weren't ready to spend the money. They they were, you know, like, and, and my, honestly, I'm pretty reasonable compared to some of the other lawyers um, in my area. But um, but anyway, so they were, weren't ready to spend that type of money. Either they're really early stage entrepreneurs, like just getting started, or for whatever reason, um, they needed my help but couldn't afford me. Um, and so I decided, like, I hate sending them away and just saying, okay, well, good luck with that. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> After I've talked to them and understood their issues, if I felt bad, you know, but obviously I couldn't, you know, feasibly service them and not get paid for it, right? Um, so I decided I wanted to find a solution. And so I looked for a solution, um, like checked out some of the books out there that I could recommend to them and things like that. And there was just nothing that I thought was a useful tool that had everything that they would need. Like, what's the point of creating something that's just hard to understand or doesn't have the contract templates, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I decided to basically just sort of download my brain and put in everything that I take my clients through when I first start working with them. So like the first year or two, me working with a new client, mm -hmm. everything that I would do with them is in Small Business Bodyguard. So I just kind of put it all in there, um, you know, and packaged it so that it would be really easy and also, you know, fun. It's it's kind of hilarious, which is the point because, you know, that's the other thing. All the legal, you know, uh, resources out there are incredibly boring. So they put me to sleep and I'm a lawyer and I actually enjoy reading this stuff. So <laughs> well, not only boring, but I think they, they, can, they tend to be very hard to understand. Exactly. It's just too much legalese. Like lawyers are really trained to talk to other lawyers. They're writing for other lawyers, right? Like when they're writing a legal brief, you're writing it for the judge who's also a lawyer and your opposing counsel who's also a lawyer, right? Like they're not really, it, it, you almost have to turn it off. That's how you're trained in law school. So you have mm -hmm. to kind of turn it off to be able to talk to normal people, you know? <laughs> Jeez, <wow. laughs> So anyway, so that's kind of why that happens. But yeah, I just wanted it to be fun and light and easy to follow. Right, and right. so, you know, that's why I created SBB. So that way, if I spoke to a client, figured out what their legal issues were, and, you know, they weren't ready to work with me, I could say, hey, I have this other resource that will probably help you with a lot of those things. Sure. sure. So the, the, the uh, contracts, the checklists, the templates, whatever you want to call them in Small Business Bodyguard, they're, they're sort of like a jumping off point for people. Like, you know, or, or were they like 
something that they could actually customize for themselves and and say hey we're done you know or where where where, where are these these things for for small business be, uh, owners would they would it be something that they can take and run with or is it something that they would still need to have uh, a lawyer checked out with, by, yeah. by the, the lawyer um, yeah, that's a great question. Actually, most of the things in there, they would be able to customize it for themselves. Um, the key thing that I always tell people about Small Business Bodyguard is if you buy a template or you just find a template online, you probably don't understand what's in it. And so you don't understand what you're agreeing to. You don't understand what the other party is agreeing to. The whole point of a contract is to have understanding. So everybody's on the same page, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why for SBB, there's, you know, a chapter in there that just exp explains contract law, you know, so you get it. And it's in plain English and we try to make it fun. Um, and then we also have another section that's all about contracts as well. And it goes through the different clauses in a contract and tells you what they mean in plain English, you know. Right. We call it the... Um, small business bodyguard like Rosetta Stone. <laughs> so like, you know, it takes this complicated thing and boils it down to like, here's what this clause is doing. So that way, after reading it, you can prepare your own contract. You understand what's in it. You understand why you have those clauses in there. You understand the point of its length. You know, some people say, oh, this contract is too long. It's scary to send to my clients. But it's like, if you know what's in there and why, then you can get rid of the stuff that you don't need and have all the things in there that you know you do need, you know? Mm -hmm. So I feel like you need the understanding and you need the template so that you can customize it for yourself, send it to your clients, you know, check that off your legal checklist and move on to the next thing. Excellent. So yeah, Excellent. it's designed to be like, you know, you use it and like you're actually using it in your business, not just, okay, I understand this stuff. Now I need to, a lawyer to take action on it. No, the point is, is that, it's supposed to take the place of needing a lawyer. Now, there are some things that you do need a lawyer for that are just too complex for me to boil down and make it simple. Mm -hmm. And so for those things, we like flag it so you know. So for one example, if you're in a business with multiple business owners and not husband and wife either, like if you've got multiple founders, mm -hmm. you're dealing with different households mm -hmm. involved, that's more complicated and that's something that you should get a lawyer involved to create an agreement between the parties so nothing goes wrong, you know, gotcha. between the founders. So there are certain situations which don't affect every small business, but some that we always flag it for you and tell you, hey, this is the type of thing that you really do need a lawyer. Like if you wanted a patent, patents are definitely just get a lawyer. There's just no way around it. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. So, so let's talk a little bit about this new thing that you're just about to launch called Illegal Nunchucks for Photographers. You know, yes. Once you, you know, since you've already have Small Business Bodyguard, uh, what what purpose does Legal Nunchucks serve? Uh, and is it is it really only only meant for photographers? Yes. So, after we launched Small Business Bodyguard, um, the response was kind of incredible. I was just shocked at the response that we got. So we have. A lot of small businesses in there, a lot of creative entrepreneurs, and a lot of uh, photographers specifically um, that are using the product. Um, and so some of the questions that we get, everyone tells us they love it, which is awesome. But there are some questions that we get that are industry specific, you know, whether it's the photography business or uh, filmmakers, you know, uh, life coaches. We've gotten industry specific. We've got a lot of doctors and, you know, health and wellness professionals. And so they have questions specific to their industry that wouldn't make sense for SBB because it's not going to affect all entrepreneurs. Um, but so we thought like maybe we should do sort of an add on. Mm. So that was the original idea is like, yeah. here, here's sort of like you can upgrade your SBB to get your industry specific guide, right? And so the goal is to create legal nunchucks guides for a variety of industries that are, you know, our customer, our customer base. Okay. Um, we decided to start with photographers because, well, photographers, for one, like you were saying in your introduction, um, the, there's a lot of legal issues that affect photographers, and it's hard to keep track of it all and to create a sort of a system for it. Um, and then also I was talking to a friend of mine, um, Krista Miola, who's a pro photographer. She's been doing it for 15 years or so. Um, and we just got into a conversation about it and she was telling me that a lot of the people, the photographers in her audience ask questions about the legal stuff, um, specific to photography though. And so I said, okay, you know what? I think I'm going to create a product specifically for photographers. I'm going to start there mm -hmm. and then I'm going to do all these other industries. So, so that's sort of how it came about. Okay. What's included in uh, legal nunchucks for photographers? So it's, it covers the 10 legal mistakes that photographers make. Okay. Um, 
that's how we sort of found a way to sort of simplify it a little bit. Um, so it'll cover things like, you know, which business entity is best for photographers. Now we have a discussion about business entities in Small Business Bodyguard, but this discussion is specific to photographers and what photographers tend to do and what what's actually best for them, you know. Um, we also talk about, uh, we have a client service agreement in there that's customized for photographers. Um, and then we talk about what should be in there <clears throat> that seriously affects your photography business with every client. Um, and then we talk about, you know, copyright, copywriting your photos and how to protect yourself if someone's stealing your photos, what your action plan can be, how to prevent people from stealing it. Okay. So there are things like that in there. there it, we talk about model releases, grants of rights clauses, um, you know, uh, terms and conditions for your website. So we kind of go through everything that you need to know. So the funny thing is, is that we didn't intend it this way, but the way that it came out is, is that even if you don't have SBB, as a photographer, you could purchase legal non trucks for photographers and it will take you through those first steps of getting your business together. You'll have a solid client service agreement. You'll know how to register your copyrights. There's a checklist for everything you need to do in your photography business to cover, you know, your legal issues specific to your photography business. So it'll give you that primer. And then oh, wow. if you wanted more, you could go and then get SBB, um, you know, if you wanted to. And then there's the other way around is true too. If you have SBB and you're a photographer and you want the industry specific stuff, you could then purchase uh, legal nunchucks. So right. it kind of works both ways. Excellent. Excellent. Um, you know, the, the question that I think most people have is uh, like, so uh, what should I be doing? You know, where do I start? You know, what, right. what is it that uh, I could be doing as a photographer? What is the first thing I should do legally uh, as a photographer? So give me a, give me an idea. Give me an example that something that most photographers are struggling with that, you know, you have an answer for. Yeah. Well, I would say the number one thing is a client service agreement. Have every single client of yours sign a client service agreement. That will eliminate like 90% of your, your legal issues as a photographer. Not all of them. There's still some other ones and they're still important. But I think it all starts with the way that you're working with your clients and making it really clear. What is it that you're selling? Are you selling, you know, I've even had this confusion in my own life uh, hiring photographers to take pictures, you know, of my son when he was born, right? Um, it, it really, it's about like, are you purchasing the rights to the photo, you know, or are you purchasing a license to use the photo in a limited way? You know, that's one of the first things that obviously has to be in the contract is the grant of rights clause and making it really clear what your client is purchasing. Um, and then you want to have a lot of other things in there, like your policies, cancellations, someone cancels, uh, you know, the day of what happens when you've rented a studio and you've got your photography assistant that you've already paid and you've got hair and makeup there, you know. Um, you want to have some policies if you do boudoir. I know a lot of photographers do that. That's a big thing nowadays. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, then there's some interesting new, like, there's some additional stuff that you want to have in your contract to prevent situations where someone was, you know, maybe positioned by the photographer for the sake of taking the photo. These people are not necessarily models. Maybe they're not comfortable with the way that they were touched. You want to avoid that kind of situation. So you want some some clauses in your contract to sort of protect you from from those things. Um, and you want to make it clear, you know, um, uh, what they're paying for, what they're getting in the package, if hair and makeup is included, what are the you know, terms around that. And then the most important thing, well, I shouldn't say most important, but equally important is the boilerplate. So the boilerplate is the stuff that's in, you'll see it in a lot of contracts, not just a client service agreement. It looks the same you know, to a layman. It, will, it looks the same you know, every time you look at it right? In, in different contracts. But this stuff is incredibly important. It will seriously save your ass in the, in the event of a dispute. So things that are in there are like you know, terms that you cannot amend the contract orally, meaning that if you've got a contract, here's the terms of the agreement. Later on, we have a discussion, and you say you'd prefer X, Y, or Z. That's not our deal. Our deal is what's in the written agreement. So mm. if you want to add to it, right. you got to write it and, and both parties have to sign it. Right. That's one thing. Another thing is, you know, choice of law. So like, and venue, where is, you know, if there's litigation, where's that dispute going to happen? If you're a wedding photographer and there's inclement weather, you know, like there is today, yes. and yes. you can't show up to wherever your place is because the airport's closed or whatever, what happens then? So you want to have a force majeure clause in there um, for that purpose to cover that. And then also if you're going to be sued, 
you want to make it clear that they have to come to your backyard where it's convenient, right? So you want them to come to Connecticut or wherever you are. Yeah. You don't want them to come to, you don't want to be pulled into court in California because that creates a whole new set of issues, you know? So, so that's one thing. Attorney's fees, you want to make sure that's covered in there. I've had clients who literally had someone, you know, that they worked with, they did all of the work, did not get paid, you know, and so they wanted to take them to court and the decision came down to is attorney's fees included because litigating is expensive. Mm. So he was willing to front the money, but he wanted to know that he'd be able to get it back and he wasn't sure. So he had to just take the gamble. You want to be confident that not only are you going to get your money back, but also all of the litigation fees that it's going to cost you to bring that lawsuit. That's what makes it doable. You know, so those are just some of the really important clauses that should be in there. Oh, another one I should mention that is not all attorneys do this, but it's always in my contract templates because I think it just serves people so much better is a mediation clause that says if there's a dispute between the parties, we can't just run to court. We have to go to mediation first. It makes it mandatory. So that means that both parties are going to go to mediation, sit down with a neutral third party and try to work it out. And mediation is way, way cheaper than going to court. And you don't necessarily have to hire a lawyer to do it. So um, always have a mediation clause in there too. That, that's a big one. So uh, let me understand this correctly. So y what you're offering through legal nunchucks is essentially all of these options. Is that true? Yes. The contract template has all of these different clauses in there. So, and there we even have some where, you know, different photographers might do things differently. Exactly. So we have a couple of different clauses like okay. on the fees section, we have three different versions that you can sort of pick and choose which version makes the most sense for you. Gotcha. Is there an electronic version of this at all where, you know, it could be a, maybe a, an iPad application that could be easily just checked off and sent to a client for them to, to, to sign off and send back to you or whatever, you know, is that, is that, yeah. is that something that works? Um, we actually don't have an app for that, but there are awesome apps for that. And we have a whole discussion about that in uh, Legal Nunchucks, where we tell you not just how to get your contract drafted, we give you the template. So, and just so you know, too, this is a, you know, it's a, it's a nicely designed product, but oh, we also beautiful. have the yeah. word, we have the word version as well. So when you purchase it, you get access to the member site where you can find the word version to all of your documents. Okay. So you can just download it, easily customize it for your business. And then what, what we suggest is that you upload it to HelloSign or something similar. There's also EchoSign. Mm -hmm. There are a few options. Mm -hmm. HelloSign is what I use in my business. I love that one the most. But um, you upload it. You, know, you can send it to your you know, client and you'll get it signed so much faster. Because the main issue is people have to print it, sign it, scan it, put it, <laughs> you know, right. send it back to you. And so they take forever and you never get your contract signed. The other great thing about a software like that, you know, all these different apps is that they store them and they have your records. So you can see every contract with all of your clients that was signed when it was signed and all of that. So highly recommend it. Even if you don't get legal nunchucks, definitely <laughs> yes. use HelloSign or one of these other uh, electronic signature apps. And just so you know, too, electronic signatures are totally legit, exactly the same as putting pen to paper. Got it. Excellent. Excellent. Um, I, I think I think it's it, it behooves uh, photographers uh, for, for if if they choose not to look at this. I mean, they really need to look at this as as part of uh, part of their business, part of their operating expense of, of buying something like this and 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 sitting through it and and just getting it done. You know, yes. uh, it's kind of like. Uh, you know, having to go to an accountant at the uh, the end of the year or uh, right around April in you know, a 15th, you go running to the accountant and trying to get all your, all your <laughs> receipts are taken care of. It's kind, yes. of. it's kind of like that where you you have to get these things um, sort of in your workflow, in your system. So yes. that so that when when you when you are, uh, you know, you're called upon uh, or challenged uh, by a client, uh, it, you know, it's, it does happen once in a while. Yes. You, you are you are fully protected and you are, you know, you have answers for these questions, you know. Exactly. And, and you're and, pre you're prepared for yeah, that scenario. Yeah, absolutely. And so there's, you know, you're, 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 it's actually a customer service thing almost, you know what? Yes, absolutely. Right? Because that's what I tell people when you're, you know, scared to send a contract to a client, don't be. Yeah. This is your way of taking care of them too. Exactly. You're saying, hey, yeah. this is what I'm going to do if right. I can't show up somewhere. Right. Here's my cancellation promise. policy. Yeah, right. Yeah. You're promising them that you're, you're actually going to deliver and, and telling them, look, we're agreeing to it and this is legal. You yes. Know? 
and, yes. and that's that's huge that's that's a huge little step you'll be surprised like i find that most of my um customers and you know clients of my law office tell me that you know they're when they're initially scared and then they start sending out their contracts the response is amazing like they say, oh, great, I'm so glad you have a contract. I feel so much better about it. Now I understand exactly, you know, this answers all my questions. Right. It just also gives you that really polished look and gives customers uh, confidence in working right. with you. It, it, it almost um, adds a layer of credibility to your business. Totally. You know? Absolutely. Because you're not just like, oh, you know, let's do this photo shoot next week and I'll show up and that kind of thing. And, and it's all <laughs> ambiguous and no one knows what's going on, you know? Yeah. And you really, exactly. this gives you an opportunity to spell things out and put things on paper and, and everyone's happy. You know, that's yeah. really the end goal. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate it. I, I really oh, wanted no to hear problem. from you. So what, what the, what the benefits of having something like this was, and it's clear to me that this is, this is important to do. And so I will, personally use them myself so that's that's a promise to awesome you. i love it i love it <laughs> rachel thanks for joining me today take care thank you thank you for having me bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.